We have joining us the CEO of Diaspora PR, Jermaine Sowolu, is talking to us via Skype from the United Kingdom. Good morning to you, Jermaine. Good morning to you, Aziza. Jermaine, uh, when this government was coming on board, one of the three cardinal uh, focuses that time was corruption. And, and it was, in fact, besides the economy and, and uh, security, corruption was one of the areas Nigerians were really looking forward to uh, uh, the government handling. But the way we've been hearing things now for the past two years, how satisfied are you that this government is really doing everything to tackle corruption? Well, I believe this administration has really done a lot to try fight um, corruption. And um, but many may complain that the efforts are not sufficient. But in reality, it has been one of the most proactive administrations in the fight against corruption. Um, during the good luck era, the Obasan just era, um, there was also fight of corruption. They, they played their own role. But here we see a man who, um, in the president, in the person of President Mohamed Buhari, who is known to be someone of integrity, and who has come out and said, "I'm going to fight um, corruption head head on." But what we see see right now is that the perception of many Nigerians is that for you to deal with corruption um, in the country, as the slogan that the administration came up with, change begins with me, um, it has to start with the president's administration, the pre those that surround the president. Because all we see right now is that we see him being a man who seems like an angel, and we see some people around him who are doing I am having some corrupt practices. Let's not forget that even in heaven we had the Lucifer, and even amongst Jesus's um, twelve disciples, there was one evil person. So this thing is happening happens around the world. But what we must see right now is that we must have accountability when it comes to the fight against corruption. We must see that whatever loot that has been recovered is is actually um, kept and used for a just purpose. Transparency International, in a report that they wrote, actually actually said so. They said that up to 75% of Nigerians that are going through, that they were, that were surveyed, see that, nine, that the, the, the perception of corruption during the years of 2014-2015, and even um, to now, was very, very high. So even we as Nigerians, we know that there's a co problem with corruption amongst us. But as the uh, justice said, you know that it, it's more than just um, um, a, a thing that you can fight or you can kill heads on, it is more like a culture. It is a, it's a systemic problem. It is in the public, it's public service. It is in the economy. It is also in security. We know what, we, what happened even the time of the Dansuki um, um, Gate scandal. We see what's happening in the Mina scandal. We see all these things happening. If we don't fight corruption, it will affect one of the, um, the, 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 the tripod areas that the government wants to fight. That's the economy, um, security, and corruption. If we don't fight corruption, it's going to affect our security forces from doing their own work and also our economy because we are actually going to be um, 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 hampered and hindered and to move forward because most of the loots that are, that, that are taken out of the country could have been used to build schools, build roads and develop our in infrastructure. So um, corruption needs to be fought but it has to be, there has to be accountability and transparency in the processes that actually um, see that persecution of those found corrupt. We must put the fear of God in people to ensure that this fight is actually won. All right, uh, Jermaine, let, let me come to you now. We've seen so many cases sometimes where if there are allegations against anyone, the people from the person's ethnic group or the people from uh, the family or even uh, the state sometimes try to shield him and give reasons why, you know, diversionary mm -hmm. reasons why he, should, he shouldn't be prosecuted. If the other person didn't uh, was 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 found with the same kind of thing and wasn't persecuted, how why why are you doing that? Go, go and finish that before you come here. Now the issue, mm -hmm. the issue of um, family, the issue of ethnicity, the issue of this is from our own enclave and all of that. Nigerians themselves, do you think that is where the problem really lies? Before even the government as an institution to handle this issue. Well, 
where there is a problem, there's always a solution. And if Nigerians are the problem, uh, we must change ourselves and we must be the solution. We must have a reorientation against the concept of um, corruption. As I said, it is a cultural thing. I, must, I can even say it is an innate thing that is inborn in the human nature, whereby we are corruptible and we can commit corrupt acts. You understand? But that's not being an excuse. We must rise against that corrupt tendency and be people of character, people of uprightness, and begin to do what is right. Because once you do what is right, you will get the right results. And Nigeria will start moving once again in the right direction, known as a nation full of integrity. Now, you can also say that nepotism is also corruption, whereby you favor certain people from because of their tribe or their ethnic background, and you put them in places of position because, um, and that can be seen as corruption. That is the kind of tendency that people have. They believe that if their family member goes into the place of public office, that they too must be enriched. They must get they must get they must get contracts they must be empowered quote and unquote by that person being in office because they believe you going there eat part of the national cake and mm. share among all of us and that is also kind of nepotism so to say so and we must see that corruption must be fought without ethnic lenses or or, or fought with tribal um, lenses no we must fight it um head on we will see the case even one closer to the case of fighting corruption when it comes to the nia boss and baba Wow, whereby we see what happened um, with the EFCC even trying to um, fight corruption, talking about ethnic background. So we saw the um, uh, man, Mr. OK, um, the NIA former boss, he was, um, um, was, he, was he summoned to the ENCC office. They were actually going to um, start investigating immediately. But Papa Chela, well, what happened was that they said they're going to set up a panel. So you can see that it has, it's not just a, a cultural thing, but it's also an institutional, institutional thing. We have to see a situation whereby our our institutions are strengthened. Whereby I, 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 I was really glad to see that the president actually sat uh, with members of the judicial um, team, you know, um, in, in a conference. I think that was just earlier this week or so. And they talked about the need to, to obey. They, they, they pointed to him and said, you know, Mr. President, with, with all you respect, that you know what, you have to obey court orders. And Mr. President, you said that you guys also have to be seen not to find loopholes and give the people easy passage too. So it has to be a collaborative effort whereby the executive, the judiciary, the legislature, and we Nigerians will rise up together patriotically and say we want to save the soul of this nation. We want to save the image of this nation. Because as the president said, if corrupt, if we, we don't fight corruption, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill Nigeria. Right. And that corruption is a culture. And Jermaine Sonwalu from the UK, you're the CEO of Diaspora PR. Thank you very much.